Hey guys, welcome to another TARDIS building video. Now, as mentioned in my previous video, uh, for the next few weeks, we're gonna go over uh, some of the panels, each panel, and just show which parts I have and don't have as we wait for the weather to uh, warm up and stay not rainy so that I can get my materials to build the TARDIS. But in the interim, I'm still looking for parts. And I would like to go over some of the ones that I have found so far and share with you. So part of the process and the reason why I wanna make these particular videos to start is that I need parts. Um, I only know so many things. Sometimes the parts that are on a build, especially if it's something that's using retro parts and whatnot, aren't as evident of what these parts is or what these parts are. So because of that, there's a, I know there's a number of people who watch my videos and maybe you know people who are in different um, areas of expertise throughout the world. A lot of these parts that come and go into, especially the more you know current TARDISes, uh, come from a variety of sources. And I'd really like the opportunity maybe you recognize something or at least give me a name or something to search by. Uh, as we go through each of these, there's also parts I have found and identified and found the exact thing that they used on the build. So. Yeah, I would like to kind of go over that. Part of my parts and process come from eBay. Some of my parts came from Bob's Bits, which did supply, I think, all of the little parts that went onto the TARDIS build, for, especially for the one that we're building here. And because of that, uh, again, some things are unlabeled, some things are unmarked, some things don't have any sort of identifying markers on it at all. So here we'd start off with the diagnostic panel. So as you're looking here, this is the panel with the oval screen. So uh, each panel has some very distinct elements that uh, I may refer to as those as remembering their actual key names uh, doesn't always come to me but this diagnostic panel has some really interesting pieces and I figured we'd just kind of start right from the bottom and work our way up uh, this one's actually kind of interesting actually to start in the middle uh, is the computer monitor that is something I will be looking for uh, probably getting a used one that will fit my dimensions because again my TARDIS is going to be a little bit smaller I'm going to need a smaller screen but I'm hoping that each panel individually will be controlled by some sort of um, Raspberry Pi or some sort of unit to give it kind of some life and to kind of work off its own so basically I can run a screen saver or I can run some graphics to run on it to match the TARDIS console or anything else I want maybe I can hook it up to a DVD player or whatever and I can run episodes so I don't know we'll, we'll see what that one actually does so start at the bottom there are two potentiometers that look like this and I will take some close-up videos here as well uh, these were kind of cute. They're kind of fun. There are two of them on the initial build that one does get replaced later on, uh, I think during Capaldi's time, where it gets turned into a glass bobble. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they lost it. These are tiny. I wouldn't be surprised if they lost it. <laughs> or maybe they need it for a particular reason. I don't remember off the top of my head if there was a particular prop need that they had to do something, but it could have been or it was uh, or changed to do something that later just kind of blew past and you never know filming is kind of chaotic at times but anyway this is I think pretty much the exact same part it's kind of cool it spins it does go on one of these there's a number of these that I will need throughout my build I'm probably have to grab some more and it does uh, connect with these little little pins and can hook up to things and do certain things again not sure what I'm gonna do with it or not I'll probably use the device regardless and either will be unconnected or whatever and then I'll just be able to like turn this little knob it's pretty fun. I really like how the, the numbers on the side window do change and you can lock it with this little tiny switch on the side. It's pretty cool. Next up, there are four knobs that are on some serrated fluted plates and they are these. So I'm pretty sure I found that right ones. Uh, these are not vintage, these are modern. So they may be based on a vintage design or maybe they've just continually been made since then, who knows, but uh, Features to call out on are the white dot instead of a, a line or whatnot. And of course the beveled interior of the top knob. So really, I, I'm really happy, really stoked that I found these. Now each of these are on uh, a piece that I didn't know what it was at first. And it's a, I don't have any yet. Uh, I don't know if I'll actually get this particular part or whether I'll just uh, manufacture it myself. You can get these, the, some they can range in prices and, and, and costs, but they're pretty, pretty simple, they're pretty, uh, self-explanatory they do show up in several different places on the console build so especially underneath these now I don't know why aside from maybe just making these stand up a bit more maybe they actually wanted these to spin a little bit more freely without getting stuck on the flutes of the bottom plate I don't know why but there it is it's, it, there's four of those uh, underneath that though is something I don't know what it is uh, it is a fluted 
metal wheel and it shows up there's six on this panel alone and there's several on other panels i don't know what it is now before people immediately jump on the comments or suggest uh, i don't think it's a pastry cutting wheel uh, for a couple of reasons one being as i'm really certain that these are the right knobs the plate underneath would be approximately about three inches. Uh, most of the pastry cutting wheels are between two and two and a half inches. I couldn't find any for three inches. But also, anytime you get to that size, those pastry wheels, they tend to have their flutes get wider. So this one has really tight flutes. So I'm not sure what it is. I did go down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out maybe it was a reflector. Uh, maybe it was definitely for something for an aircraft. My thought process is they got them from Bob's Bits and they got like a stack of them and they just used them wherever they wanted. They, this part shows up on all those little side panels on this particular console build as well. So along the, those extra control pieces. So what are they? I don't know. If you know what they are, let me know. In the interim, as I'll show here, is I have 3D modeled it. So I've also uh, printed it and done a test cast, which I unfortunately don't have on me right this second, but it, it worked it worked great it's going to work just fine uh it's gonna do the part uh but i don't know it would have to have a hole in the middle because i doubt they would have punched them all and i think uh, as i'll pull up here i'm pretty sure they have a hole in them so they would have mounted to something but there's no mounting screw holes it's just a solid disc so i don't know uh if you do recognize it please let me know again i don't think it's a pastry cutting wheel uh, but if you find one that looks that like that, please let me know. Uh, you can reach me on here in the comments, but you can also reach me on Instagram and Facebook as well. So let me know there. Moving on up uh, from there, or on either side, there is the Ormond slow motion faders. They were used on vintage radios and whatnot. And this is an interesting piece for me to share because I couldn't find them at first. I did find one uh, via Bob's Bits, but, I, but only one at the right size, uh, especially with the eight sides to make sure that's, that it's right. But the only one I could find was this one. Now, the first thing, if you're noticing, is that it's gray, not black, uh, but otherwise it's exactly the same. You turn the knob and this little window moves across to show you your frequency. It's missing its uh, inset window with the, the normalizing line on it. And it, it's pretty simple. Uh, when I mount this, it'll be pretty quick and easy to mount it. Uh, the good thing is, the best thing is, the second one, because I, I couldn't find this, I found this one. This one is exactly the same one that is used on that console. So I'm really happy about that. It's got the little window. It is really well worn, which you'll see here in the close-ups. I really like it. It's a little bit smoother. And I, and I don't know if it's just because of the condition of which they got it. The inside is a little different, but for the most part, um, they are pretty much identical. Now, what does this mean for my build? Well, obviously I could paint this one and I could change it, but none of these these numbers or anything are, are engraved. So if I do that, I'll have to replace all that. So I'm probably just gonna leave this as is. Uh, it is it's got a nice patina, it's got some age to it. Uh, however, if I find another one of these, I will replace this one and then I'll just use this on something else or I'll sell it. So, because I mean, there are lots of uh, radio makers who are probably maybe looking at this groaning that I'm doing what I'm doing with them. But for the most part, I, I love them. I like the fact that they're different. Yes, the console has this, this particular panel has a very symmetrical feel to it. But in this case, I, I'm okay with that. It is still my console. So I'm really happy to find these parts and to be able to show them and have them and be real parts, you know? So they'll be on there. I don't think it's really gonna be that noticeable to be honest, but I'm really happy with them. So they're, and I, and I keep an eye on them. So if you happen to see another one and you don't mind me having it, <laughs> feel free to send me a link if you find another black one. But for the most part, I'm happy with this so far. At first I thought I was gonna have to only get the silver ones anyway, but I was very lucky to find this black one, which was not from Bob's Bits, uh, but unfortunately it was from a, a star, store online that only gets so many parts. That's the thing about these vintage parts is that they were made back in like the 30s, 40s, 50s and whatnot. And once they're gone, they're gone. Moving up from there is another modern-ish part, and that is these trackballs. Now, at first, I didn't quite know what they were. I don't even really recall them using them too much. Maybe I have to go back and rewatch. But uh, I think I figured out what they are, and I think it's these. This is a massage ball that comes in one of these. So I was a pain in the butt to pop out. But what I think happened is they took these, and then uh, Nick Roboto, who worked on the real one, uh, laser etched these. I, he has done similar techniques for some of his. Um, weights, uh, paperweights, and other things that he sells on his shop at uh, Rubber Toe. So 
My suspicion is that that's what these are. So I got uh, four of these just in case there's a screw up because I'm gonna give these to someone who can laser etch spheres and hopefully it works out. Uh, if it doesn't work out, I have all, all other options. I mean, I could leave them blank. I could also uh, do a different technique and paint, paint them instead of engrave them. But I'm gonna try engraving first. I like to go as accurate as possible. But that's what these are. And basically it'll be like a little cup that'll be in the TARDIS that will help still keep it rolly rolly. So I got a little bit of figuring out to do, but I'm really excited, excited about these. So next up from there on the right hand side, one of the only asymmetrical parts of this entire thing is the fact that it has some sort of microscope piece or telescope piece or something. If you recognize it, let me know. I have not identified it, but it does look kind of, I don't want to use the word cheap, but like it looks like mass produced chromed plastic kind of look to it. So uh, whatever part it came from, I think it's just a piece of it. It did go missing in later episodes. So even if I can't find it, it's not that big a deal. I could also replace it with something else if I want to customize a little bit. But for the most part, I don't really recognize it. So if you do, please let me know. Above there, now there's more of those fluted plates, but they are also on uh, one of these little cranks like these. Now, I think the one on the real one there is the one size up from these. These are the one inch ones that are seen on proton packs and whatnot. And because my build is gonna be a little bit smaller, I think I'm just gonna use these uh, for now, unless I change my mind. Again, they just kind of mount on, so if I do change my mind, I can just uh, take it off and replace it. There are three of these in the entire TARDIS console build, so I thought this was pretty, be pretty cool to have. And finally, the middle. Now the middle has, it's definitely built up, so there is the uh, plexiglass or acrylic piece with three switches, uh, and then of course the lights that are connected outside of it, and then there is some sort of box piece in the middle. Now that box piece in the middle, I have not identified. It's probably a computer or hardware piece, but in the middle of it, you'll notice it also has the flat ball bearing ring on there as well. So again, they used it a few times. In the middle of that, there is a stand and then a light. Now, there's a bunch of these lights and I'm gonna show right here to close up because it's not really focusing on <laughs> to show it this way. Uh, there's a very specific type of light that these are all, and again, they would have got a whole bin full of these. Uh, so what I've done is I found a bunch of clear and red and green and blue um, dome lenses, and I've had the yellow ones dyed a little bit. I may have to like fog it up or uh, make it a little bit slightly more opaque, not so translucent. And I had to, I 3D modeled the collar. Now the collar is one of those things that is super vintage, it's super hard to find. I have one which I'll show in a later video when uh, we get to more of those lights, but incredibly hard to find, especially with the right lenses. So I want to skip that step and use these lenses that are still readily available. And I was able to get the actual 3D file of these lenses so I can create the threaded pattern inside and to which there will be a light fixture. And this way, these pieces will be cast. I, I did play with the idea of getting them machined out of metal, but the cost was gonna be a little too high for me, especially since I need some like 50 of them. So for now, it's gonna be this, and I think it's just, it's gonna look great. It's a one part mold. Uh, my partner Elena did, did the mold for me from the 3D print. It's just gonna be a nice simple thing, but it is gonna look a little bit more correct in the end. Once I get the basic of this panel created, I will add in all these pieces that I have currently and sit them on there and we'll go from there. Any piece I haven't found yet, my idea when I get through each of these is if I have a piece I haven't found yet, I'm just gonna leave it blank and then I will add it when it comes in. Or if I have to 3D make it because I can't find it anywhere, I'll deal with it then. So that's kind of the idea. Anything that I'm gonna have to do that with in the beginning, I will plan for it, and anything I have to wait, I will wait. But that is the diagnostic panel. <laughs> if you guys have any questions or uh, ideas about this panel, please let me know in the comments below. I look forward to hearing some feedback. Uh, if you recognize pieces, again, ask people around you uh, if, if they recognize a piece. Uh, I know there'll be some initial uh, thoughts about what they could be, but I'm, I'm completely open to hear what they are because I know that these parts were pretty much just grabbed and slapped on this build, or maybe not slapped on, planned out and put on this build, but uh, without any regard of where it came from because that's not how prop making works. I've been on that side of things, you are brought items to put together. You don't necessarily know what they are. They don't always have uh, labels like these, like these fluted discs probably don't have any sort of codes or numbers on it. So even if I asked Nick, or even if I found someone who currently knew where the console was, could go up to it and take it apart, pick up a disc, may not know what it's from. So in this case, I kind of need to figure it out. So if you, again, going forward, there's gonna be more of these, hopefully, well, 
there's gonna be more of these parts I haven't found. So hopefully you guys are gonna be able to help me. I hope you enjoyed the diagnostic panel breakdown. I can't wait to share the other ones with you. So keep on liking, keep on subscribing. But guys, thank you so much for watching.